Pre-order my new book, The Body and the Cosmos at NadiaShaw.com and get free gifts. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of November 3rd, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And this week is increasingly moving in a direction of inspiration and grounded practical results that have the potential to last a sense of being able to take magic and draw it to earth so that it benefits us in lived ways. But in order to get there first, we may have to move through feelings and emotions and perhaps even experiences that can feel challenging, even frustrating. But it is this very frustration that represents ultimately just a moment. And once we move past that moment, the energy gets easy and inspired, even magical as well. So there's a lot to talk about here. Let's start with the energy as we start this week. Uh, chances are some of us are feeling it more than others, and it is an energy of some frustration, of some challenge. And that is because Mars will be speaking with Pluto in a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. It is this conversation that represents motivation. It represents determination given the nature of these planets that is involved. And the determination is ultimately to create change, to experience different circumstances, renewed or rebirth circumstances at that. Both Mars and Pluto both are ruling planets of the sign of Scorpio. I have been speaking of this energy quite a bit lately because it has been so dominant. It is Mars that is the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio and Pluto is the modern ruling planet of Scorpio. Now, even though both of these planets are not in the sign of Scorpio, Scorpio is continuing to remain active mainly because of a Mercury retrograde. It is Mars now that is moving through the energy of partnerships, the sign of Libra. And this is about considering other perspectives, knowing ourselves differently as a result of relating to others, sometimes very different people at that. It is Pluto right now moving through the sign of Capricorn, which is about examining and turning over and understanding power more deeply and power dynamics and power structures. So how is it that we can bring this energy of transformation, of regeneration to the way it is that we relate to others while keeping mindful of the power dynamics that can be there at the same time? This is part of the invitation now. And sometimes we can take that journey in ways that feel easier than they might at other times, more harmonious than they might at other times. Like now, it is now that this very journey relating to others, power struggles, power dynamics, power imbalances, they come to the forefront. And where is it that we are getting in touch with the balance that we desire, that we are willing to fight for, and the change that we are truly wanting? Now, all of us in at least one area of life may find ourselves connecting to a willingness to fight for what we want, for, to fight for what matters to us. Now, that fight can take us in all kinds of directions. And there is a type of fighting that when we come at it from the perspective of the spiritual warrior, well, it is the spiritual warrior that approaches with wisdom, with insight. And it is courage that is deeper, the courage to claim our abilities and our voice and our own energy, our own will and our own agency, the courage it takes to own the agency to move our life in the direction that we desire while surrendering control over others. Sometimes it is from that spiritual state, from that spiritual warrior state that some of the most profound transformations have occurred in our own lives and in the collective as well. So this conversation will perfect right around Tuesday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet. And it's as if we are starting this week feeling a sense that something's gotta change, something's gotta give. 
We've got to move forward. We've got to push forward. We've got to fight for what it is that we really want. Summon our energy, summon our determination to make some change happen. And all of that energy builds to a certain crescendo. So on the way there to that exact alignment, it is very important that we practice self-care because it could be that in at least one area of life, we are being asked to give a whole lot of our energy to the point of exhausting ourselves, to the point of feeling drained. And when it is that we feel drained, we're really not good to anybody. And so this is where self-care steps in and comes into the picture. And so we reach this moment and as soon as the energy peaks, it very quickly dissipates. It very quickly turns into something else. It turns into us having the realization we need, moving past, pushing past the barrier that might have been, perhaps even just the barrier within ourselves. And instead, we start moving towards a much more inspired sky. And inspired really is the word for it. It is late in the week that we are going to have the sun reach out and speak in supreme harmony with Neptune, simultaneously in harmony with Saturn. And then at the very end of the week, it will be Saturn and Neptune both that will perfect the third and final moment as part of their larger dance that they've been in throughout 2019. It is these two energies, Saturn and Neptune, that I think not only will be a saving grace, but will help us to bring full circle some of the blessings that this very energy has been trying to deliver in our lives. With Saturn moving through the sign of Capricorn, it has been affirming a sense of structure and success and what that means for us, what it is to be ambitious and what's worth having a goal for and moving towards. What is it that we truly want to manifest? Well, if it isn't rooted in something that is meaningful, something Neptunian, something that feels like it's bringing to earth what otherwise would be of dreams and spirit, what otherwise would just be of inspiration and fantasy, if you can't turn that into a reality, well, it becomes that much less meaningful when these two planets get together. There's a sincere desire for these two planets to feed each other, to ground the dream, but also to bring a sense of structure so that what otherwise would be fantastical can be made into something substantive, can be made into something that actually benefits us in meaningful ways. It is one thing to be compassionate, it is another thing to create more compassionate structures. It is one thing to have a dream. It is another thing to make a plan and then follow that plan. It is one thing to say that you believe in our interconnection to everyone and everything. And it is another thing to act from that place of kindness in a way that makes a difference in people's lives. And so it is ultimately this energy that becomes very integrated with this beautiful alignment. The type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. Now, there are two main harmonious connections. There are other more minor aspects uh, that astrologers sometimes use, but it is these two, the sextile and the trine, that are considered easy aspects. And I actually think that the sextile is more useful as an easy aspect because the trine, which is a supremely harmonious alignment, it can make us a little lazy. It can make us feel like blessings are there. We can attract them. They're always going to be there. And of course we can. And a lot of people have trines in their chart and there is that sense of blessing there natally or when we have a trine playing out in the sky, there can be that feeling of blessing. But it means that we might not do the work that is sometimes required to make the most of those blessings, but a sextile ensures that we do the work. With a square, we may not even realize there are blessings because we're so busy doing the work. But ultimately, squares get a lot done. Squares are required for success. The square of Mars and Pluto as we start the week is required so that we make the most of 
the blessings that happen later in the week. And so we are going to have this sextile, which will ensure with a little bit of effort, we're making gains. And so therefore we're motivated to make even more effort and more effort. And in this way, the sextiles give us a lot of control, but it is also under the same sky, the sun adding heat, adding power, the sun trining Neptune. Now that is a beautiful energy. That is an energy of poets and musicians and spiritual people of all kinds, healers of all kinds can revel in this energy, can enjoy it fully. Well, it is this energy of the sun and Neptune and the sun sextile Saturn as well. This is ultimately what sets up what astrologers call a mystic triangle. It's not exactly a major configuration, but it is a notable configuration, certainly. It's three planets sharing energy. On one side, there are two sextiles and on the other, a trine, setting up this triangle in the sky based on their mathematical alignments to each other. And it is the sun that is also receiving the energy of Neptune and of Saturn. So if you wanna know how it is we're gonna integrate the energy of Saturn and Neptune, how it is that we are going to embody and shine and live the experience of our dreams made reality, look to the sun, look to where it is you have Scorpio in your chart where it is that the energy of Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio is in relation to your own sign. And that will tell you how it is that you are likely to this week tap into the blessings of Saturn and Neptune. That you not only ground the energy of inspiration, but that it changes you, it renews you, it regenerates you in one area of life in some meaningful way. And so the energy of Neptune and the sun, that in and of itself can be uh, very flighty, can be very fancy, which is why it's great for creative people, especially where it is that you want to plug into source and use the focus of the scorpion energy to tap into inspiration to your advantage. But it is ultimately that Saturn that is going to ensure that we take whatever comes forward, whatever we feel and move it towards not only manifestation, but also our own unique definition of success. It is nothing less than this that we are moving towards now. It is nothing less than this that is being lit up now in meaningful ways in all of our lives. What I love about this week for us, well, look, there is a lot here, but of course it is that major configuration of Saturn and Neptune. The next time that these two planets will connect will be by conjunction, which means they will actually meet in the sky in the year 2026. And they will meet at the very beginning at zero degrees of the sign of Aries. That is going to be a very important moment for the collective, for humanity. And it is years away. These two planets, Saturn and Neptune, are not going to have a major alignment, major connection until we get there. And what that says is that the opportunity to truly integrate these energies, these energies that ultimately need each other, well, we're not going to have that again for a little while. But when it does come about in the middle of the next decade, it is going to represent an important turning point, a point of manifestation for humanity where the lessons and compassion that we are learning now in this slow move of Neptune moving through its home sign of Pisces, right now we get that opportunity to take some of that compassion and have it become reality, have it change people's lives, have it change structures and systems. But that actual change, that actual new beginning, having it come together, that is gonna happen in the middle of the next decade. But it is now, it is 2019, that in very important ways does set the stage. Now remember also that Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. And that means it inherently represents a sense of culmination, a sense of endings, a sense of what it is that has come full circle. After going all the way around the zodiac, it comes to the end point, which is the sign of Pisces. 
And so there tends to be closures and uh, understanding of what it is that is not meant to go into the future with us. And a part of the sky now, a part of the wisdom now, it is about helping us to see and to understand what it is that works with the future that we are creating, what we hope to manifest, and where it is that healthy closures need to happen. We're motivated to do that work now. But that work will be fully realized by us, especially as a collective, once we get into the middle of the next decade. We are now, as we start, as we are in this week, uh, we're about eight weeks left into this decade. That is a very powerful thing to contemplate as we start this week, eight, nine weeks left. And what that means is these very energies of insight, of wisdom, of compassion, of culmination even, are the kinds that are going to represent an even larger culmination, an even larger wisdom that will start to be revealed to us more and more fully as we enter a new decade. This can be a very important moment in a lifetime. Yes, for the collective, but in your lifetime as well. This can be a moment of matching your most ideal self your most idealistic self, your most uh, elevated, evolved self that you see in your mind's eye, your higher self, and actually bringing it to earth. It is a chance to be a modern mystic and to give that mystical message in a way that changes your life and the lives of others in real ways. And where it is that we can bring together compassion for others, but also compassion for self, that is when real change and real magic occurs. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff speaks to you and your sign, Log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have an announcement about my book, The Body and the Cosmos. Thank you so much to everybody who ordered advanced copies. They were all sold out. I appreciate you guys so very much. We confirmed addresses with just about everybody we could. We even called people based on the phone number in your PayPal when we didn't have the address. However, there are still 10 people with whom we have to confirm mailing addresses with. So if that is not you, if you haven't actually connected with my assistant, please use the contact form on my website. If you purchase the advanced uh, copy with all the perks that go along with it uh, and you didn't hear from us, get in touch. There are about 10 people whom, for whom we have packages ready and available to ship out. And again, I hope you absolutely love uh, the package that you get and uh, the book. Now the book is available for pre-order through Amazon. And if you do pre-order through Amazon, there are a couple of things. One is you have to forward us the receipt because then you get to get a free gift on launch day, December 9 that we can send you and it will be Amazon that takes care of everything, your payment and making sure that you get the ebook. The hard copy book will also be out on the official launch day of December 9. However, uh, it is not available for pre-order. Only the ebook is available for pre-order. But if you are, want the hard copy, the final, final hard copy, uh, it will be out on Amazon as well. Now, the other thing to know is that as I'm looking through this book, uh, and the wonderful job that my editor and my proofreader did, there are a couple of things that I do want to change before the final, final official launch uh, takes into effect. And then that is the moment when the book is totally done. So if it is that you got an advanced copy of the book, you are getting something truly very rare, a unique copy of the book. <laughs> and uh, the final copy will be a little bit different. So if you are reading the advanced copy, and you notice some interesting things, uh, know that I may change some of that, but not too much. The book will essentially stay the same. It's just a few things where I feel like there's a little bit more I wanna say or a little bit more I wanna do. But you know, here's the thing with books. 
there's never enough to do. Like you could look at it again and again and there's always more to add. And at some point you have to turn it over and say, here universe, it's yours. Uh, and so I've kind of done that with the advanced sales, but not totally, totally. And so before it really goes out there worldwide markets, uh, I will maybe tweak a little bit here and there, add a little bit here and there. So be on the lookout for that as well. But I hope that you absolutely love it. And yes, pre-order and you will get the meditations as downloads to this book as a free gift on launch day, December 9. Lots of stuff coming up December 9 that I will be announcing that I look forward to. Now, Synchronicity University, earlier today, we had an amazing class on Pluto. It went long, it got pretty intense, uh, and students really did enjoy it. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you did enjoy it, those who joined us live. I hope you love the replay. And of course, if you wanna download that class, it's ready and available for sale. Uh, whether you wanna buy it as part of the Autumn Package or as an individual download to learn from infinitely, it is on my website. It is at synchronicityuniversity.com as well. Um, I will be announcing the next session coming up. It'll either be announced this week or next week. And again, there will be a choose your own tuition rate uh, that is available in the month of November only. So be on the lookout for that. But this session is still going on. We have one more class left and that is on electional astrology. Uh, the astrology of choosing the best date for whatever your new endeavor may be. And we are going to go through like the different types of things you might want to start and what you want to look for for those different types of things. You know, Queen Elizabeth I had her astrologer, John Dee, choose the perfect coronation uh, date for her. And she was considered one of the great monarchs of England in English history. So there might be something there to the best date, choosing the best date. So we're gonna look a little bit at that as well as a historical example, but of course there'll be lots of practical things that you can learn as well. So if you wanna learn more about that and sign up for that class that takes place next Saturday, click on the links below. I have a lot of live events coming up, new dates, new announcements that I'm really very excited about, and they include uh, my upcoming event in Florida. I will be hosted by the NCGR group out in Florida, and there will be two parts of this, well, three parts of this event that I'll be doing over the weekend of January 11, the Saturday, January 11. It will start with my book launch party for the body and the cosmos that is free to attend. Everybody is welcome. I will have cupcakes for everybody as well. I'll give a very short presentation, but I'll have books on hand. I'll be doing selfies, signing books. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun for us to enjoy together. And then after that, we will have the morning talk, which is on the 2020s from earth to air. And then we are going to have another uh, workshop, which is on past lives in the astrology chart. So there'll be a lot that we're learning throughout the day. A lot of fun we'll be having together, whether you want to stay for the talk or the workshop, that's great. That's up to you, one or both. If you just wanna come for the uh, book launch, that would be great to come and join the party. Again, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And thank you so much to the Florida NCGR group for hosting me and for uh, welcoming everybody to this free event that will be taking place on January 11. January 12, I am off on my first ever cruise ever in my life uh, as part of an amazing group of world-renowned astrologers. I will be presenting, I will also be a participant, I'll be right there with you going through this once in a lifetime, truly transformative experience, love, joy, hope, and transformation aboard the cruise. And uh, there's so much to look forward to here. Lots of excursions and different things being planned. People are still signing up. There are over 60 people who have signed up for this event and everybody's looking forward to it. We know it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a Facebook group, people are already interacting. So if you'd like to learn more, if you wanna do a last minute trip, you're like, I know it's November, but you know what? I'm going on that cruise. I'm called to be on that cruise. You can click on the links below and you can learn more about that. Upcoming events in 2020. As I said, I've started to add uh, dates to my calendar. And so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a heads up. Some of these dates I'm about to give you are not even on my website yet. So in uh, the last weekend in March, I will be in Istanbul in Turkey. And then the first weekend of April, I will be in 
Bangkok, Thailand, one of my very favorite cities in the world. I am so very excited about this. I'll have lots of details in the weeks ahead, but save the date. If you are in Thailand, I will be there uh, teaching over the course of a weekend in one of my favorite cities, Bangkok. Uh, and then in May, I will be in Toronto with Astrology Toronto. They are hosting a talk by me and Memorial Day weekend in May, 2020, I will be in Seattle. And then right after Memorial Day weekend, I will fly right to Vegas. I will be back in Vegas. I will be doing a talk the last Tuesday of May and then a workshop uh, that's following Saturday. So there's a new date as well. Again, it's not even on my website yet. We haven't even gotten to it yet, but just save the date. Know that I will be back in Vegas and it'll be a party and we'll have a lot of fun. Again, we had a huge group join us. Uh, it was one of the most successful groups of uh, the NCGR group out there, the Stargazers group. And that meant so much to me to have so much love, so much support. So I will be out there again. And I love Vegas. Vegas is also one of my very favorite cities. In um, September, I will be in Denver as well. So lots of, like I said, my schedule is filling up. There's a whole lot going on and we will continue to keep in touch and have fun and we will keep talking about it as well. I have two quick announcements. One is consultations. All of these cities that I mentioned, I will be doing consultations in and my Florida dates are filling up as well. It is January 9 and 10 that I will be doing consultations in Florida. So if you are in any of these cities that I have mentioned and you would like a consultation, you would like to sit down with me in person and I look at your chart and I read your chart for you, I would absolutely love the privilege to do that. So have a look at the contact form on my website, get in touch and we can have that come together and we can make that happen. Now the second announcement, the last announcement that I would like to leave you with is the fact that very soon I will be um, announcing a raffle and this is a charity raffle. All of the money raised is going to go to charity and I will be choosing the charities and I will let you know. So more information about that is coming up later this month and there will be 24 days of giveaways. So the first 24 days of December, every single day I will be giving away things. And so you can expect your inbox to be full if you are uh, on my newsletter. I will be sending you a lot of newsletters. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. I hope you love my newsletters, uh, but I will be announcing every single day as prizes go out and I'll be online every single day. I'll be live somewhere. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna make that come together, but I will make it come together uh, for us as part of raising money for charity. And um, as part of this as well, if you do something that is aligned with love and wisdom, that you feel aligns with love and wisdom, and you would like to donate something to this charity raffle, please do get in touch with us. Use the contact form on my website and let us know what it is that you're offering and we can give you more details and have that come together. And in exchange, you do get promotion. You get me actually talking about what you do and I will be sure to talk about uh, every single person over the course of the 24 days, every single person who donated something will get a shout out, will get mentioned on my social media and uh, I look forward to that. I think that's gonna be fun, but also I think that it is really important. I've dreamed of doing something like this to raise money for charity for a long time. And I'm really grateful that there has already been so much support, so many donations of consultations and, and books and all kinds of things coming in already. And if you would like to be a part of that, if you have something that you'd like to offer, get in touch with us and we can make that happen and have you be part of my first ever holiday uh, charity raffle. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much to all of you who stayed through to the very end through my announcements. I appreciate each and every one of you so much. Again, coming up very soon, the next session of Synchronicity University is gonna be announced. Lots of amazing classes that you guys have asked for are gonna show up in the winter session of Synchronicity University. And of course, I'm gonna be here every single week as I have been for over 10 years now on YouTube, uh, staying connected with you guys online as well. And thank you. Thank you for being here. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.